Let's bring in Sean Salisbury, a popular talk show host, The Sean Salisbury Show, on Sports Talk 790 in Houston, former NFL quarterback. Sean, good to have you on, okay? Thanks, Dan. Better chance. Let me go with better team in Texas right now. Cowboys or Texans? Oh, Texans are. Texans are. Quarterbacks both good. C.J. Stroud's past Dak Prescott, I think, as far as the guts, the guts, the ability to challenge down the field. I think now with Stephon Diggs, depending if the talent's bigger than the headache, because we know what he's got, and that's going to be a test. But the bandwidth of their offense, Dan, and just having to defend pregame lining up in your practice week, they've got a better running back now with uh, Joe Mixon because he's so good out of the backfield. Tank Dell will be healthy. Nico Collins is becoming a number one. And I like their defense better. The Texans have added you know, all this talk, and people aren't talking about Daniil Hunter. Is one of the, he's in the team picture for top pass rushers in this league. Yeah. Dominant player. Yeah. The Texans are the better football team, and I also think they're a more confident football team with right now a coach that commands more than what they're doing in Dallas. Help me understand why Buffalo did this. Dan, I, I think they saw that the all the, the headache was bigger in Buffalo the last year and a half than the talent was. And when you got a guy who doesn't want to be there and a coach who is a seems to micromanage a little in McDermott, and he's been with a couple hard-ass coaches with Mike Zimmer and has yeah. Stefan Diggs, and now uh, you know with McDermott, he's coming to a guy who's not a micromanager, but you know the rules in the building. I think Buffalo did this because – they wanted to clear out a guy that they just didn't think was going to elevate them to the next level, and it's probably good for Stefan Diggs as well. Now Buffalo, where they went out and got Curtis Samuel in the offseason, their weapons now, they're going to have to elevate to another level. They've been sitting on the doorstep trying to get to the Super Bowl, so I'm interested to see how they're going to take care of their draft, but they need more weapons on offense now, and maybe they're thinking Josh Allen can overcome it. But when a headache hmm. becomes a migraine in one city for whatever reason, and it was now it's happened in two cities – you're hoping it doesn't happen in three if you're a Texans fan. But this is an upgrade for the Texans to add to an already explosive offense with Joe Mixon here as well. But Buffalo did it because the headache became bigger than the talent in Buffalo. Yeah, that's what I would be concerned about. You're getting a 30-year-old receiver who may not be a number one receiver uh, anymore. And you have a young quarterback like we had with OBJ and Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield wanted to make OBJ happy. And you change your offense. And uh, that that was to the detriment of the Cleveland Browns. Dan, that is such a great point. And it was talking about this and thinking about this yesterday when this happened. Talking about this morning is it's what happens is if you have a strong personality as a, as a wide receiver. I, I played with Chris Carter. He was a strong, strong personality. And he wanted the ball, and rightfully so. He's in the Hall of Fame. But he still had to fit in with the Jake Reeds. And we had Anthony Carter. And we had Herschel Walker. We had Robert Smith. So and with Warren Moon and Jim McMahon at quarterback, you had an opportunity to kind of respect that position and knew where you were, still found a way to get him the ball. But it's going to take incumbent upon C.J. Stroud and them not to fit into to, to Stephon Diggs. It's just Stephon Diggs to fit in with what they're doing. But it is easy to get to a point where you say, I got to get him involved. I don't want him to be a malcontent. And then it changes the way you go about being honest and reading the defense. And Dan, I'm going to tell you, it's not now. It's not in training camp. Camp. It's not an OTAs or mini camp or in August. The, the real test is going to be when Nico Collins has nine catches for a buck 50 and two touchdowns. And in game three, Stefan Diggs catches two balls for 28 yards and the Texans win. That's when you're going to find out where's the headache. Is it a migraine or is it just a little nag because you it, it, it's, it's, it's hanging around and a Tylenol will fix it. This is a Tremendous upgrade if, in fact, Stephon Diggs goes back to the way he was when he came into this league and had something to prove. And he does have something to prove. And I just think the bandwidth of this offense going into a game is huge. But there is still that if. And if you have too many ifs on a team, it becomes a problem. I think with Ryans and C.J. Stroud, and I think he's at a, a slippery slope in his career as Stephon Diggs to get to the level that he wants to be. But it can't just be about his numbers. It's got to be about what's really getting yours. And that's putting a ring on your finger in the process because Nico Collins and Tank Dell are both really good players. But trying to defend this offense now, I think it's one of the three or four, or I might be cheating them out of a slot or two, most explosive offenses, at least on paper, if things work out in the league. Because remember, Dan, Mixon's as good as we have coming out of the backfield, like a McCaffrey catching the football in space. How are you going to defend them all if they're healthy and a little bit lucky with, uh, with attitude? 
Sean Salisbury, former NFL quarterback and host of the Sean Salisbury Show, Sports Talk 790 in Houston. We're a few weeks away from the draft. The quarterback that makes you nervous is who? Um, well, I think the, the guy at the top of the draft and Caleb Williams and as an SC fan doesn't make Dan, if we didn't know anything about the guy and you and I were sitting around in a film room and plugged into tape and said, so let's just watch him play. First thought is dynamic playmaker. I get the comparisons with Mahomes because of the ability to play off schedule and all those things, but the questions will exist and you know how locker rooms are is, is he a guy that while everybody else is wearing, you know, a green a pair of shoes, he's wearing a red pair. Is he a guy that that if things aren't going his way, that it doesn't matter? He can find a way to win when he's not having that Caleb Williams performance. He is a dynamic, phenomenal football player. Locker rooms matter to me. They do. And when, when you're a guy that beats to a different drum, and he does, and guys are giving you a hard time, can you handle that locker room fun? that we call it, or some would call it getting, because he is going to get it from veterans. He just is, you know, whether it's the painting the nails or wearing a clutch in a purse and doing all those things. But the truth is, if he's a playmaker, that will go by the wayside. And he is. But leadership, buy-in, and guys, that locker room, it doesn't matter what you and I think. It matters what those guys sit next to him. But if you can play, they don't care. But the locker room's a different place. So I am concerned about the leadership and buy-in Overall, if things aren't going well, he's not going to the Kansas City Chiefs. He's going to a team that's picking first for a reason. So I'm anxious to see how he responds to that. And and so I do have questions. I don't have questions about him on the playing field. Hmm. So it's the, it's the periphery stuff. And some, I've talked to two coaches at SC about a year and a half ago that said they do buy in. They love the guy. And then you hear guys say, well, do you want that guy leading your team? Because he maybe beats to a little different drum, which is okay. But his performance on the field will dictate that. Otherwise, then you go down. I think Jaden Daniels is a hell of a player, quick release, and showed me that he pushes the ball down the field because the year before last, he did not take many shots. Penix is a great pocket guy. J.J. McCarthy, too. Here's why people are going to question this one, Dan, trading up to get him. Think North Carolina basketball. When Michael Jordan, Antoine Jameson, and uh, Vince Carter, they played averaging 17, 18 a game. But you knew the gem was there when they were able to get out from under maybe Dean Smith and expand. That's J.J. McCarthy. He's got great feet. He's a winner, which you crave, and it's in his DNA. He is an accurate passer, and he can throw the football. But he hasn't had a chance to expand because that's not what Jim does at Michigan. He's going to get the chance. You're trading up for him. I think that while there's going to be questions, I actually think that he, five years from now, could be one of the best we have in this draft because he wins and he gets it. But – expanding his variety to stand back and throw it 40 times, he's going to have to be well coached at the next level. Leadership for Williams, more throwing for J.J. McCarthy. Those are probably the concerns for both guys that could have sensational careers. Always great to uh, catch up with you, get your insights. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate you, Dan. Thank you, buddy. Sean Salisbury, former quarterback, host of the Sean Salisbury Show, Sports Talk 790 in Houston.